on former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. And an update from President Biden on a COVID relief plan. Will you receive a check and how much will it be? Moving out of the way, but tracking winter weather coming our way. From the heart of Ball State University, live from the Unified Media Newsroom, NewsLink Indiana starts right now. Good evening and thank you for being with us. I'm Zach Jones. And I'm Katherine Segal. Tonight we begin with House impeachment managers finishing their case against former President Donald Trump. Lead manager Representative Jamie Raskin delivered the team's closing argument. The Maryland Democrat urged senators to convict Trump on charges. Due to the insurrection on the Capitol on January 6th. The prosecutors finished their case hours early. They say the mob stormed the Capitol because the president sent them. You don't have to take my word for it that the insurrectionists acted at Donald Trump's direction. They said so. They also say Trump offered his support for the mob and showed no remorse for the role in inciting their anger. Trump's legal team will begin arguing their case tomorrow. Lead lawyer David Schoen says they will show no link between Trump and the actions of January 6th. I think you'll um, at least be moved by what you see and get a much better picture of exactly what's going on here and the hypocrisy in uh, some of the positions taken by the House managers in this case. While President Joe Biden focusing on his $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill. Monday, House Democrats advanced a child tax credit expansion as part of the package, boosting payments up to $3,600 depending on the child's age. The full benefit would be available for single parents making up to $75,000 per year and couples earning up to $150,000. If we can get this done, which we will in the next four weeks, we're likely to make this a permanent feature of what is known as tax expenditures. Biden signaled last week that he was willing to negotiate income thresholds, House Democrats rejecting a Republican counterproposal. Instead, Democrats suggesting $1,400 per person to individuals earning less than $75,000 per year and couples earning under $150,000, also $1,400 for each dependent. Under that plan, individuals making more than $100,000 a year and couples more than $200,000 would not receive payment. That's double the threshold proposed in the GOP plan. A final relief package is still weeks away. The White House wants to make sure it's done by March 14th, which is when current federal supplemental unemployment benefits expire. Biden is still proposing to raise the federal minimum wage to $15 per hour. Well, apparently that's not going to occur because of the rules of the United States Senate. The president is remains firmly committed to raising the minimum wage to $15. 1.1 million workers filed for first-time unemployment claims last week alone. The Department of Labor released its latest jobless report. The number includes 793,000 who filed for first-time unemployment benefits. Also, more than 334,000 people filed under the Pandemic Unemployment Assistant Programs. Indiana residents aged 60 to 65 could soon be getting their COVID-19 vaccine. Hoosiers between the ages of 50 to 59, as well as those under the age of 50 who suffer from certain comorbidities, will be on deck, according to the State Health Department's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Lindsay Weaver. The eligibility age drop also comes as the state sidesteps federal recommendations for vaccine rollout and delays the timeline for teachers and other essential workers to become eligible However, there are, there are no specific timelines in place for when these eligibilities will take effect. You could be able to visit your loved ones and residential care sites again soon here in Indiana. State lawmakers moved forward with a proposal to change visitation restrictions amid concerns about residents losing out on interaction with family and friends throughout the pandemic. The measure approved by the Indiana Senate today would require health facilities to allow at least one caretaker to visit a resident during what they call compassionate care situations. Under the bill, long-term care facilities would also be required to designate at least two caregivers. One of the oldest churches here in Muncie is now an event menu. 
Newslink Indiana's Anna Chalker shows up how one family fixed it. When the North Church was built in 1893, the church was home to many, but after it sat abandoned for nearly 20 years, Michael Jennings and his family stepped in to fix it. COVID graduated me and I immediately came here and uh, worked on this all quarantine with uh, my brother and father. With the ceiling collapsed through the building and almost everything destroyed, the Jennings knew this process would take time. Uh, it was a tough process, but we, you know, we, just like anyone else, uh, had to check all those boxes, prove qualifications. And Opening the venue during the pandemic also brought its challenges. The capacity, limiting events to, from our mid to small events to only small events without having our name out there. But when the people of Muncie heard of the grand opening, the response was immediate. Absolutely 100% positive feedback. The positive feedback influenced Jared Michael Huggins to schedule his first photo shoot there. So when I saw that there was another event space, I was so excited. Um, I had my first shoot in there, which was a maternity um, session, and it was, it was amazing. Being in there, so. And if the challenges of hosting an event may show during the pandemic, the venue has every precaution to keep everyone safe. Still have a great event with a great turnout and still be able to wear your mask, still be able to socially distance if need be. Jennings has been able to preserve a lot of the church to keep its history alive and wants people to see the beauty in it and also enjoy the time they spend there during these challenging times. In Muncie, Anna Chalker, Newslink, Indiana. Well, the church looks beautiful, and speaking of beautiful, that snow, it is pretty. This, you're talking about the snow, right? Yes. Because <laughs> that same snow is so cold. I, I do not like it. Natalie, hopefully we won't see much more of it. Well, more about the snow we'll talk about later on, but right now we just see some clouds moving through the area. This weekend we're going to track clearing skies for tonight moving into tomorrow. Another chance for snow moving in for our Saturday going into Sunday. And also an Arctic blast moving in, surging in cold air into the area, making for really cool conditions for this weekend and the start of next week as well. And we'll talk about more of that in my full weather forecast. A student band right here on campus. Newslink Indiana's Grace Benkowski tells us about their journey from Northwest Indiana to Muncie. We're the Clark Street Band because we, uh, the barn that we practice in is on Clark Street. The Clark Street Band has now been relocated to McKinley Avenue, where these three freshman students reside on campus and create their music while at Ball State University. The group was born in Lowell, Indiana, where it had its humble beginnings. Freshman year, we uh, rode the bus together. Yeah. And we were like really into music and stuff. Uh, Fleetwood Mac was a big band we were into. So he had the idea, he was like, why don't we start a band? and it'll be a Fleetwood Mac cover band, and we call it Fleetwood Jack. Through Fleetwood Jack, the ball started getting rolling, and we started taking it more and more seriously, and it started getting more uh, official. After returning to their hometown for winter break, the Clark Street Band was ready to get to work on campus. It kind of just everything fell into place, and we actually got more productive being here. It, it just keeps us motivated, keeps us wanting to do something. When it comes to their sound, the group describes it as exploratory, with songs that will appeal to any audience. We're just trying to, you know, kind of, you know, explore our sound and see, yeah. see what kind of sounds we can make out of our instruments and what kind of types of songs we can piece together. For the Clark Street Band, their next steps include an EP release in just a few short weeks, something they didn't initially envision as part of their college experience. Like we actually picked a name and we have songs and, and things like that, like stuff that I never thought would be that would come from just a bus ride yeah. freshman year. Rocking out in Muncie, Grace Benkowski, Newslink, Indiana. All flavored tobacco products may be coming off the shelves. We'll give you the latest in what lawmakers are saying. And your Mardi Gras plans could be changing. Stay with us. Riding the bus is an easy thing to do. Last year, we carried 60,000 riders from the Ball State area. 50,000 of those were students.
anywhere you want to go, Mitz will take you there. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. A bill banning all flavored tobacco products is moving through Maryland's legislature. Two committees held hearings on the House bill yesterday debating whether the proposal goes too far. Some vape shop employees say the ban could take their jobs away, while bill supporters believe the ban will help keep the product away from children. The House bill is expected to be amended and the state Senate is considering a milder measure which would ban menthol cigarettes and flavored vaping products. Online dating app Bumble is looking to match with Wall Street. They began trading on the NASDAQ today. As of last night, the stock was priced at $43. That's up from its original proposed price of about $30, signaling strong investor demand. 31-year-old Whitney Wolf Hurd, who founded Bumble in 2014, will become the youngest CEO to take her company public. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has updated its guidance for those celebrating Mardi Gras. The CDC suggests anyone hosting a Mardi Gras party should make sure that people have enough space for social distancing while wearing appropriate masks. This goes for both indoor and outdoor parties, but the CDC says outside is safer than inside. The safest way, they say, is to celebrate virtually and with people who live with you. A story going viral across the nation that started right here in Indiana. A 17-year-old girl from Gary, her name is Kendall Jackson. She's become one of the first Amer African-American women to become an Eagle Scout. Yeah, along with that, breaking down gender barriers, Jackson says she considers herself to be a part of black history. Jackson joined the Scouts as soon as the group started admitting girls in 2019. Earning almost twice as many merit badges as she needed, she is now part of the first class of female Eagle Scouts, which includes about 20 other black women. Only 6% of Scouts reach that rank. Yeah, and just a really cool story, especially because she's so close to home, northwest Indiana. It's pretty close to here. Yeah, and speaking of Indiana, we know it's freezing. <laughs> I need an Eagle Scout to teach me how to make my own fire. Oh, me too. Natalie, what's it looking like? Yeah, I'm seeing cold temperatures right now. 18 here in Muncie, really in the upper teens to low 20s right now, but those temperatures are expected to drop, and I'll talk about that in my full forecast. If I could go back and change it all. I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back. If I could go back and change it all. If I could go back. I would. But I can't. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. It's really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey. Why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look!
One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Now 9.15 and you're taking a look at the East Mall. But what you kind of can see there is that snow. We were talking about how it was really cold out there. Mm -hmm. Natalie, are we going to expect any more of that? Well, we have some snow moving in later this weekend, but we are going to experience cloud cover right now actually move out of our area as the night does continue. And talking about these temperatures that we have right now, we're at 18 here in Muncie, 18 in Indianapolis, and 20 degrees in Shelbyville right now. But these temperatures are going to continue to drop as the night does go on, tracking out these temperature changes for us. But um, 10 a.m. tomorrow, we're at 15 degrees here in Muncie. As the day continues, those temperatures are going to make it up to 19, about 20 degrees in our viewing area, but those are expected to fall back down for our Saturday moving into Saturday. But along with these falling temperatures, we also have falling wind chills as well. We're at, for at 3 a.m. on Friday, we have a wind chill of 3 degrees, and those temperatures are expected to get down to even zero in Portland here and one degree in Muncie. Those wind chill values are going to feel extremely cold. And what these low wind chill values mean for us is that it's going to feel really cold because it's not an actual temperature value, but it's what it feels like outside due to wind and cold. And that means for us, if you're going outside, you really want to bundle up with a lot of layers, wear a hat, mittens, gloves, really cover all exposed skin because of the risk of wind chill, you're at the risk of frostbite or hypothermia if you are going outside. For tonight's forecast, we are going to see mostly cloudy conditions tonight with only a 13 degrees as far low tonight and a northeast wind at 5 to 10 miles an hour. For tomorrow, it's not going to warm up that much, but those clouds are going to clear out of the way a little bit for us tomorrow, making for partly sunny conditions and only a high of 22 with a north-northeast wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Along with these cool temperatures, we also are tracking a little bit of a snow shower moving into our forecast this weekend. Looking at precision cast, we can see this cloud cover stay most out of the way for Friday. But come 10 a.m. on Saturday, we do see snow start moving into our viewing area. The snow is not really going to accumulate much, but it's going to be flurries and some snow showers moving over our viewing area. With all this talk about cold weather and the snow and stuff, I'm ready for spring. And we only have 37 days till spring now. But this warm-up isn't going to happen quite yet for us. On our mid seven day forecast, we can see we are at these falling temperatures. And come Sunday, even a low of 10 degrees, with falling down to zero for our low. So for Valentine's Day, we're really going to want to stay inside. Another chance precipitation comes back for our Monday and Tuesday for the start of the week. And temperatures are on the warm-up for us, but we aren't going to have that spring temperatures just yet. Right, so I heard you say 37 days till spring? 37. I wish it was quicker, but it's not. I mean, we can, we can make it. We, we can survive. Yeah, the only thing I'm not excited about is my allergies. Oh, yeah, that's Spring is tough. the worst. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Natalie, so much. Ball State Volleyball is actually playing right now in Worthen Arena. We'll be live at the game with updates and highlights. And one area basketball team has made the most of the 2021 season, despite all the challenges COVID-19 has presented. Find out who is making waves in Delaware County, next in sports. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlow. Oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Trulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Problems. The ones nobody talks about at cocktail parties. We go looking for them. No matter the obstacles, no matter the odds, we surround a community's most critical problems, and we fight. United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. Will you? It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. 
It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. When I think of kids going to school hungry, hunger, homelessness, in this land of plenty, seriously? Come on, we could fix this. Help out or don't. The choice is yours. Weeknights, NewsLink Indiana brings you the news before you go to bed. But Friday mornings, you're waking up with Cardinal Weather. We've got the latest news headlines. Freezing temperatures have set in all the way down in Louisiana. One man dead after flooding in Venice, Italy. Up to the minute weather conditions. Cold temperatures are the story this morning. And of course, lots of fun. That's, it is not what funny. on earth is happening I there? I feel sorry for the little guy. I've got my socks on. <laughs> Annie with her curly hair, which is actually never curly. Join us Friday mornings at 8 on Facebook Live. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Hannah McElroy with Sports. Right now in Worthen Arena, we've got some must-see television unfolding as we speak. NewsLink Indiana's Vincent Martirano is live from Worthen with the latest in the Thursday Throwdown. Vinny, what you got? And it's we at the cardboard cutout fans, fans watching, watching an action-packed game tonight. And the limited fans in the stadium slowly making it out to the exit doors. Tonight, there was a lot of action going on, and Ball State and Bowling Green last season were the last two teams standing in the volleyball standings. If you remember correctly, Ball State came out on top to take home the MAC title. Now let's jump into some highlights to see what happened in the first set. Early on, the ball bobbling up over the net. Bowling Green goes to set it up, and it's slammed down, setting the tone early. Next play, Ball State gets one of their own onto the Bowling Green side. Ball State sets it up and gets it over. Bowling Green keeps it alive and tries to get it over. Access denied. Ball State launches it over the net to the back line, played it up to the right side, and a teardrop play to seal the deal for Bowling Green. Tonight, it wasn't the case that we've seen in history. Bowling Green came out with a statement win over the Cardinals, and they won 3-0. Back to you in the studio, Hannah. Thank you so much, Vincent. Vincent. As, as you said, said we'll, we'll have, have all the scores, scores and standings as they develop. As the volleyball team are, was struggling tonight, it's been a completely different story for the Delta boys basketball team. Despite all the negative impacts COVID-19 has had on all sports teams, the Eagles hasn't let a global pandemic come in between them and a successful season, which was not only been shown with the team's 10 and forward record, it's also been shown in their strong bond, with thanks especially to its valiant leaders. And uh, our team has overcome COVID with, uh, I mean, we've been having to wear masks in school and stuff, and uh, being on e-learning and stuff has been tough. And, uh, you know, our coach, Coach Dawala, he, he's uh, he been texting us every day and stuff like that. And so we've been really bonding together because it's the only time we can have, like, bonding time without having to wear a mask or anything. So it's been pretty great. We've been in. Uh, we've been at our best. So it, it does have an impact, I think, mentally on guys. Uh, just staying sharp and just staying in a routine. Success on the court against Newcastle Friday night at 8 p.m. And finally tonight on NewsLink, check this out. Yorktown Volleyball's Ellie Stinson being named the Max Preps All-America team. You heard that right, All-America. She will also be taking her talents to Northwestern next year. Big congrats there to Ellie Stinson. Now, that is absolutely amazing to hear. You know, one of our own, our best friends to the south, Yorktown. <laughs> I'm very proud of her. Yeah, going really big, especially. And tonight, also with volleyball for Ball State, it looks like they're creating quite a comeback. Who do you think you, who do you, who do you got? I mean, you know, Bowling Green's a tough competitor. And, you know, I just don't think, you know, we'll see. You know, they're the one team that I think if we had to lose to. Have either of you gotten a chance to go to uh, either of the volleyball games or men's or women's? I have not, but I've really been wanting to go to one, especially with COVID. I'm excited that some games are available to, for people to watch. Right. I went to actually two men's volleyball games, and I've never been to one before because I come from a high school that doesn't have any men's volleyball. Mm -hmm. It's it's quite intense. Oh, yeah, I bet. I'll just I'll have to get my ticket sometime soon. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> 
All right, Taylor Swift is releasing a new album. Find out how one of her songs sounds a lot like an old one. And we've got a mystery to solve. Next in trending. Thank you. Thank you. Just like the rules to surviving Zombieland, there are steps you can take to be prepared for an emergency. It's the right thing to do. Talk with your family to make a plan. Look for safe areas to meet up if separated. And stock up on supplies. It's never too early to get prepared. So start now. Right now? Right now. You can't predict emergencies, but you can be ready. You're welcome, America. Visit ready.gov today to learn more. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's trending. Newslink Indiana's Blake Dollier joins us live in the studio. Blake, catch us up. Well, we've got quite a bit trending. Good evening, guys. Taylor Swift has announced a release date for her re-recorded version of the album Fearless. She also said the new version of the song Love Story would be released Thursday night. She said that in this tweet you see here. The re-recordings follow the sale of Taylor Swift's first six albums to investors. The singer vowed to record new versions of her music, versions she would own. She's making good on that promise with April's release called Fearless, Taylor's Version. She has 26 total songs, including six that have never been released. And that mystery to solve, Jinkies, Mindy Kaling, landed a role in a standalone series about a Scooby-Doo character. Kaling will voice the character of Velma Dinkley in a new animated comedy series about her. She will serve as an executive producer on the show. Kaling has written, acted, and produced several television programs, including The Office and The Mindy Project. According to HBO Max, the series Velma will tell the character's orig origin story before she became the brains of the Scooby-Doo mystery gang. Well, how about it, guys? I'm a huge Office fan, so I'm so excited. Huge about Office? This. I actually haven't watched a lot, but they just took it off Netflix, correct? And I just started watching it right when they took it off. Oh, well, that's I'm only on season worst. five, so I still got some catching up to do. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, uh, thank you, Blake. Can we take a look at that final weather, please? Dropping down to zero, so if you're going out for Valentine's Day, you may want to make that an indoor date instead. Another snow chance comes for this start of the week for Monday and Tuesday, and then a start of warm-up on the way. All righty. Thank you so much, Natalie. That's all tonight for Newslink Indiana. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night at 9, streaming live on the Newslink Indiana Facebook page or next Monday. And for news anytime, anywhere, go to BallStateDaily.com. Have a great night.